The Health Fix Podcast teaches you how to take charge of your health naturally by giving you the information you need to elevate your health. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. I have another treat for you today. I have Dr. Chris Melitis on the line, and we are going to be geeking out about MitoQ. So if you are struggling with having enough energy to get through the day, having lowered immunity, you're just not feeling great, MitoQ might be something that can help you. So what is MitoQ? We're going to go through that today. We're going to talk about how it's a derivative of sorts of coenzyme Q10, because a lot of folks might be more familiar with coenzyme Q10. Most folks who are taking statin medications have heard that they have to take it with their medication. But let's just jump in, Dr. Chris, and talk about what is this MitoQ business and how might it be more absorbable and a little bit more useful than regular standard CoQ10? Well, oh, wonderful. Great question, Doc. And thanks for having me. So as we know, and as you said, CoQ10, known as ubiquinol or ubiquinone, the ubiquinone is oxidized form. Ubiquinol is the non-oxidized form. And what's interesting is mitoquinol is a variant and a very targeted one that was actually researched and lots of work was done in New Zealand. And they were looking to see how can we protect our Energizer Bunny batteries, aka our mitochondria. And they found that when they attached a molecule called triphenylphosphonium, it's a mouthful, they actually were able to put a positive charge on what would be normal CoQ10 and they made mitoquinol. So this is a positively charged quinol molecule that actually crosses over to the, the mitochondrial membrane hundreds of times more, whereas normal CoQ10 can't. So it's basically, it's all about getting within the mitochondria. So that's the magic sauce. That's the, where the research is. And there's over 350 peer-reviewed journal articles on how MitoQ, or known as mitoquinone in the medical literature, actually does a wide variety of beneficial things within the human body because it's protecting the mitochondria, which we'll chat more about for sure. Yes, because I think a lot of people might be like, mitochondria, what? What is going on here? And like you said, Energizer bunnies, they are our little factories that help us to make energy. And of course, probably you probably can attest to this, that maybe one of the number one complaints in the office usually comes down to fatigue. Don't you think? Oh, sick and tired of being sick and tired. That would be me a few years ago and not until I started taking MitoQ and a substance called NAD. And I was like, wow, I, I'm burned out. But if you think about this, and this is very interesting. It's a, it's a concept I presented and I actually posed to an audience of mine a decade ago. It was in 2010. I was lecturing in New York to three to 400 medical doctors. I can't remember the count exactly. All I know, it was 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm an Oregon guy. And I had <laughs> flown in midnight to their time, Eastern Standard Time, and I had a 7 a.m. 90-minute keynote speech. And I said, we're going to talk about the epigenetics and the genetic code and how we can modify our risk factors, which by taking care of your mitochondria, you are as well. And But I said, but before I tell you what I know, and because I don't have very much hair for the audience, have paint a picture, so fairly bald Chris here, Dr. Chris. And I'm going, of course, I'm tired, I told the audience, but I'm good for the next 90 minutes. I'm going to share all this literature with you. But I wonder how many cells in my body have to be tired before I feel tired? Hmm. I, said, I don't know. I've tried to look it up. I can't find a medical literature. You know, I've written you know, a dozen plus books back then. I've done more since. And I'm saying, I don't know. Can any of you elucidate? Can you tell me how many cells in my body are tired as I stand up here? So I bet some of you are feeling tired too. Dead <laughs> silence. I know this is a group of functional medicine, forward-thinking medical docs mostly. And I says, okay, well, if anybody comes afterwards or feeling bashful, let me know. But I says, let's make it easier. How many cells in my finger have to hurt before I can perceive pain? Or I can say my finger's not happy. Let's get dead silence because we don't know. And I says, after all, we know little splinters can often hurt more than big splinters. And with, on that concept, slowly but surely, we notice we're getting a little tired. My father-in-law would have called it old timers, and you know, <laughs> getting old. And I'm going like, yeah, but why are we winding down? And these mitochondria, which are in every one of our cells, which have DNA, 
actually allow us, half mom, half dad, everybody in the audience, half mom, half dad, that's a medical fact. It actually allows your cells to actually ha- meet and fulfill their genetic potential. But imagine all your apps on your cell phone, your cellular phone. Back in the 90s when I was having a cell phone, and these were the big brick phones, and then through the early 2000s, they said, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? But now we have all these apps on our cell phones, our smart devices. But how good are those apps if we don't have a charge to our phone? And the answer is not. There is, then all of a sudden we have a glorified paperweight. So those apps are like our DNA within our trillions of cells in our body. Without enough charge, I don't care how good your genes are, emphasis on the word here, it ain't going to get the job done. <laughs> True, true, true. Huh. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't think about in terms of energy production. I feel like we all imagine that we have one big storage molecule somewhere and like it gets depleted over time. I don't think that a lot of us think about every single cell it takes to produce energy in our body. Oh, oh and, and, with, and it's, a, it's a conglomerate. It's like, all of your little bank accounts together combined, and that's your net energy or net worth. And of course, we know that it's not about money. All of us have a net worth far beyond whatever our financial bank statement is. In fact, some of the people with the least amount of money are those most valuable human beings in our lives. But what's interesting is if we look at the mitochondria, so once again, this mitochondrial DNA is from mom, 99% of it's just mom's DNA. And so, Dad, yeah, they're contributory to our nuclear DNA, that our Energizer Bunny ener- um, ba- um, energy, the ATP production is mother's side. So you want to know, how's mom, how's grandma, how's, how's the aunts, how's all of those individuals' energies? But remembering that just like our environment can poison our genetic me, you, us, it can also poison our mitochondria. And the mitochondria, because they're like a combustion engine, they're going, 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 going. They produce 90% of the free radicals within a cell, but because they're the epicenter of, they're also getting exposed to it. And that's how MitoQ was discovered. They said, how can we create an antioxidant for those Energizer Bunny mitochondria? And that's where the research out of Otagua, the university in New Zealand, came. They said, okay, well, we, we can protect the human cell. We take resveratrol, we can take grapeseed extract, we eat our veggies, and once again, supplementing a good diet always, that's our philosophy, but, but how do I target within the cell the mitochondria and then get into that mitochondria and protect it? Because right now, right as we're sitting here, all of us, our mitochondria are the equivalent of a car in a garage with the exhaust pipe, not only going into the cabin, but going into the air filter and you're basically ex- absorbing and inhaling metabolic waste or toxins. So that's where the MitoQ comes in. And lots of studies, and I can send you a bibliography for, to share with the audience of the 350 sites. Absolutely, totally amazing. My disclaimer is I'm an educator for MitoQ along with lots of other different companies. I've written a book recently called Mito Longevity. But I, as a doc, and I know you too, Dr. Krauss, it's like, wow, isn't the human body amazing? And so how did I get into the mitochondria? I just wonder, it says, what's the common denominator amongst all my patients and their conditions? If they had more energy at the adrenal level, the thyroid level, the brain level, the heart level, because all those cells of all those tissues have to have enough energy for them to do their quote unquote job, what they're programmed for. And I says, the common denominator is the mitochondria. So that's how I got into the mitochondria. You know, that's interesting that you mention the common denominator because I think as any doc, we're we're wanting to have like one thing that can kind of be that propel um, propellant to get our patients to feel better. And it seems that yeah, you can't really cook for yourself if you don't have enough energy. Can't really get much exercise if you don't have enough energy. And so the production of energy is such a like crucial foundational component, it makes sense that finding what would work for energy would be key in this case. Yeah, and exactly. And, and that's kind of, you know, as a naturopathic doctor for the last 28 years, I graduated in 1992. And, I'm, you know, I always look for what's the common denominator. 
of course, we have to have our water. We have to have our good food, our veggies. Mom was right. Veggies are important because we get all those wonderful phytonutrients. And but now it's like, what, what else do we need? And I often give for my patients this analogy. If you have a cup, let's say a coffee cup of your coffee or a tea cup of your tea drinker, and it's just a little bit of liquid at the bottom, but otherwise you got a 20 ounce empty container, which is more important, the liquid at the bottom or the dead space, but that dead space is full of oxygen. And so if you were thinking about taking the last gasp of air, what would you rather have a sip of water to moisten your palate? Or that air in the cup. So when we say half full or half empty, <laughs> like, hmm, that air is looking awfully valuable. In fact, if you think about it, yeah, I paid for 10 bucks, I'm just five bucks for a cup of coffee. I could, I'll put $5 on some air, please, in that cup. It's like, wow. So once again, changing our mindset to looking at was not just about our genetics, because once again, we all have friends and family which are genetically younger or older than us. But the chronologically, they may also be younger or older than us. And you and I, in our practice, I'm sure, share this concept, chronological age versus biological <laughs> age. And there's some 70-year-olds. In fact, I have two 84 and 85-year-old husband and wife. One's a chemist. One's a physicist. We have them on MitoQ. And he makes it a point every day to walk 57 flights of stairs. Huh, 57. Six-year-old, 50 flight, And on top of it, there's a hill here in town called Mount Tabor. It's a small little volcanic cinder. Um, and they, they actually walk this, you know, thousand foot hill. Hmm. And so they do about 10,000 steps a day. The husband does 57 flights of stairs on top of that. And they're in the eighties. I'm going like, darn, I wish I had that much energy. No, I'm, and I'm not joking. I'm 30 years younger than them. And so it's all about taking that mitochondrial side. So we have them on lots of good, MitoQ, we have them on something called true niogen or NAD. And it's like we're fueling their cells. And luckily they have good genes, you know, genetically, mom and dad, and they have the longevity. But it's like if you look at it, even the MitoQ, the NAD, they help with substances in our body called sirtuins and PARPs, which also help confer immune function as well. So it's just like it doesn't really stop when we talk about the mitochondria. We think energizer bunny batteries. There's a substance even called MOVS, M-A-V-S, produced by the mitochondria that actually protects it against viruses. Like, oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. So I never even thought about the mitochondria working as an immune agent per se. You know, I kind of think of like, oh, antioxidants, detox, this and that. But I never I really thought about the details of MOVS. Yeah, and nor did I. In fact, I was put to a challenge, and as a naturopathic doctor, functional medicine provider, it's like, I'm always up for a challenge. And one time I was put to a challenge, do you believe that the toxins in our world are causing us to have more food allergies? And I'm going like, well, of course, duh, right? Toxic world. But they said, prove it, do a lecture on it. So I did an hour-long lecture for US Biotech on that topic. And it's like, okay. And so then I was asked to go ahead and give a presentation on, on organic acid testing. And for those that aren't familiar, organic acid testing, simple urine tests, and we can see how the citric acid cycle, sometimes for us older providers, mm -hmm. called the Krebs cycle, how it actually played a role in the immune system. And so I was pretty much double dared, and I'm always good on the double dare. And I says, can you present a presentation on how the mitochondria are involved in the immune system. So I went to the medical literature, PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D.gov, and put mitochondria immune. And all of a sudden, boom, 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 it starts populating with all these really phenomenal articles describing how the mitochondria are not only energy, like we were saying, the energizer bunny of our, our cells, the essence of us, but in addition, they actually have direct innate immune and roles in inflammatory response. And if we look at individuals under this very historical period of time of COVID-19, who are the susceptible ones? The ones that are on meds that poison the mitochondria, those that are obese, those that have diabetes, and the older individuals. We know it's an equal opportunity afflictor, but it's like, wow, what is a common denominator? Well, the mitochondria and the obese, all things being equal, the diabetic and the aged, all have lower mitochondrial function. So could there be a clue here 
that there is this role? And the answer is, well, very much so. And the medical literature points to that. Am I making a claim that you take care of the mitochondria, you solve all the world's problems, or you protect yourself against COVID-19? No. It's just one of many risk factors, along with sleeping, eating, drinking your water, hydration, vitamin D. But it's something which, beyond thinking virus or inflammation, because of the PARPs and the sirtuins, we actually, once again, substances which I didn't even know about 28 years ago when I graduated. But once again, it's out there in the literature. It's such a fascinating time to live and to have the internet, which I know it's not like, well, it's been around for a while there, Chris. But it's like, now we can search. Any of the audience can search and look and look up sirtuins. How do I spell that? S-I-R-T-U-I-N-S or PARPS, P-A-R-P-S. It's like, wow. And you can do PARPS immune, sirtuins immune. And you and I both know if you do intermittent fasting, well, that's another way that you can improve your sirtuin levels. But the sirtuin levels need NAD. They need mitochondrial support, mitoq, in order to allow for those enzymatic pathways to protect us. The trillions of cells that make us go around every day and exist, our heart that beats 103,680 times, and that's a, you have a pulse of 72 beats, so you're not doing those 57 flights of stairs and 10,000 steps. That's 103,680 times your heart beats, pumping blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. But those miles of blood vessels, well, they need MitoQ and they need NAD and they need mitochondrial support in order to do what? To sustain themselves, to make nitric oxide, to vasodilate, to heal themselves. So you name it and we've got it right there with the mitochondria and if we forget our mitochondria, we're forgetting to charge our cell phone battery, or in this case, our body. Hmm. So now you had an interesting note in there in terms of what you're saying about the, the mitochondria need the MitoQ to help with nitric oxide production. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had interviewed Dr. Beth Shirley a little bit on nitric oxide, talking about how nitric oxide could help in immunity and talking about the connection between a lot of the folks who are most susceptible to COVID-19 and, and um, the relationship with low nitric oxide conditions. Will you speak a little bit to that in terms of the connection between the mitochondria and the production of nitric oxide and how MitoQ kind of helps, jumps in there and helps out? Well, certainly. And first off, my hat off to Beth Shirley. Her and I are at so many of the same conferences and she's such a <laughs> pioneer and an ambassador for nitric oxide. And I'm sure she shared with the audience that we make a nitric oxide in our blood vessels, in our, in our body. It has a half-life of three to five seconds. So each of us just made some, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, <laughs> three Mississippi, half of it's just gone. So we have to constantly be making it, giving the building blocks. But once again, that takes energy. In 1998, they actually discovered nitric oxide. And well, they actually gave, a, gave away a Nobel Prize for discovering uh, this gas that floats around in our bloodstream. Oh my goodness, you mean there's more than just oxygen? The answer is yes. And so our body is making this nitric oxide. A, how do you do that? Well, you do it at the endothelial and subepithelial level, endothelia being the lining of our blood vessels, and then into the, the actual blood vessels um, walls. And you need to have both ADP, ATP, once again, mitochondria. So think MitoQ, think NAD or nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside. And you're like, wow. You have to have that energy. And so you give citrulline, you give beet powder, you give these substances. But once again, it's like Keebler elves. So we're talking about Energizer Bunny, so we have to give equal time for Keebler elves. If you don't have familiar, those are the ones that make cookies, joke, pun intended. But Keebler elves, I can give the Keebler elves all the flour and all the rainbow chocolate chips in the world. And the Keebler elf has to have the energy to load up that flour and mix it and make it happen. So likewise, our endothelia and also our glycocalyx, which is even a more important protector of our nonstick pan, which are our blood vessels, actually have to have the energy. So when you have MitoQ, um, the true niogen, um, which is the NAD or the nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, you actually have to have the energy. So that's actually allowing us to do the nitric oxide production. And as we get older, NAD levels drop, MitoQ or CoQ10 levels drop and our mitochondria levels drop. And for those that love factoids and want to share them with friends, the mitochondria in all of our bodies from the age of 30 
where we make about 65 kilograms for our European and Canadian and friends in Mexico, 65 kilos per day of ATP at the age of 30. For every decade past the age of 30, we make 10% less. So I'm 54, so I'm 24% lower in my energy or mitochondrial performance. In AD, we have, see a 50% drop between the ages of 40 and 60. Oh my goodness, not good. And these are things producing and helping support nitric oxide production. And I'm sure Beth Shirley went through all the wonderful applications of nitric oxide for male and female performance intimacy-wise, blood vessels, blood pressure. But once again, it comes back to the mitochondria because you have to have that energy because the audience can say, Dr. Krauss, Dr. Elias, we're going to give you this phenomenal tool, dual research. You're like, but we're not going to feed you. We're not going to give you water. We're not going to give you any rest. And we're going to give you no support. No matter how many phenomenal tools we have, we have to have the wherefore to sustain ourselves. So imagine each of us in the audience as mitochondria. And within a cell, we have to be nourished. We have to be protected from the wireless, from the 5G, from the stress of living in a historical period of time. So once again, it all comes together with the mitochondria once again. Makes sense. Makes sense. So we have to have these precursors, if if you will, to, to kind of get that nitric oxide to be produced on an optimal level. So Without a question. And it's just like we are what we eat from our head to our feet. That was a 1970s mm-hmm. commercial on television. That's when they actually educated children on commercials opposed to selling things. It was Saturday morning cartoons in the um, early 70s for me. And it's also um, junction, conjunction, junction, what's your function? And I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. Learned all of that as a youngster watching Scooby-Doo and similar shows. Um, but now it's like we have to fuel our body. And if you think about it, we were all born 6 to 10 pounds, give or take. And now we all weigh more than 6 or 10 pounds. We literally are, if you want to think of it from a visual perspective, we are what we eat. If you Google, you are what you eat or a food body, it will show, are you made of French fries, hot dogs, Coca-Cola, or other soda pops? Um, or are you made of veggies and pristine things? Every one of our cells are built from either pristine, wonderful um, substances or not. So once again, like the three little pigs, straw, sticks, or brick. And every day we're making a choice to replenish the cells that die replenish and refuel the mitochondria, replenish and fuel the heart, the liver, the adrenals. And it all depends on how do we eat, and then we supplement a good diet. And that's just my approach for the last 28 years. It makes perfect sense. I feel like we can't get everything, especially as we get older. Now, of course, I'm I'm in my 40s and starting to think about, wow, you know, energy actually has started to drop off and, and things of that nature. And so needing to figure out what I need to supplement with and, and what my patients need to supplement with is a really big thing on my mind because, of course, as you know, we can end up with suitcase upon suitcase or basket upon basket of supplements. And so really one of my missions for patients is try to find, f- trying to find what's like most important so we don't end up with our ridiculous amount of supplements. And it seems that MitoQ would be one of these anti-aging per se supplements, something to boost immunity as we get older, something to help with our circulation, something to help with our energy. But I think what I th- I get confused about, and I think a lot of folks listening might be like, okay, Dr. Miletus, tell us exactly what does MitoQ do once it gets into the mitochondria? We know it gets in better than typical coenzyme Q10, but what the heck does it do once it's in there? How is it actually giving me energy? Well, wonderful question. And yeah, it gets in hundreds of times better than regular CoQ10 because of that positive charge of the triphenylphosphonium. But what it's doing is it's providing antioxidant protection. And the best example I can give is our skin. For anybody that spent a lot of time in the sun, we know there's lots of skin damage because of the oxidative damage. So what it's doing is actually keeping the mitochondria in a healthier, more health um, youthful state. And as a result, it's providing cellular energy support by taking care of the mitochondria. It's much like doing routine maintenance on your car engine. It's when you have a combustion engine, you don't have a Prius or a Tesla. And so you have to change your oil, change your radiator fluid, of course, put great fuel in. And when you do that, you're going to get, get have a Subaru. You're going to have a Volvo that goes 400,000 miles or 
another um, car of your favorite persuasion that's known for its longevity. But if you don't take care of it, you don't take care of the engine, which has lots of wear and tear. And once again, all those RPMs, all those rotations, all that friction, all that heat, well, in this case, it's all the free radical damage. So what it's doing is helping that mitochondria stay clean and pristine would be the way I would describe it as a very simple clinician to a patient is clean and pristine. But I will send you the bibliography, which your audience is more than well I'm glad to look at, 350 peer-reviewed journal articles, including one, and once again, I'm not making a claim here, just reporting the literature, showing that 20 milligrams of MitoQ actually improved Brachial, brachial artery dilatation, which what is brachial artery dilatation, big fancy words. Well, our brachial arteries where we take our blood pressure cuff and we go puff, 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 and you're like, okay, um, are we done yet? It's starting to hurt. Well, it actually showed over a 40% increase in vasodilation. What's the mechanism there? It could be nitric oxide, but more importantly, 20 milligrams over an eight plus week period of time, and they're seeing a change in blood vessels. Likewise, there's neurological um, research, immunological research. And so it's like, what do they have in common? Well, it's because it's taking care of the mitochondria. So I think the mechanism is multifaceted, and it just comes back to clean, pristine um, mitochondria, which comes back to showroom-ready automobile or vehicle, opposed to something that's been sitting in the backyard, ignored, rusted, wheels deflated. Then, of course, we're going to end up with what happens for a person that's not been taking care of their mitochondria, uh, a jalopy in the backyard that has moss growing on it or, or slime. It's just, and it's going to be kind of musty smell. Well, that's what happens to our mitochondria when we don't have that protection of MitoQ and of course, good antioxidants, good food and clean, clean air and clean water. Things you talk about all the time to your patients as well. It's like we have all these modern problems. And if you go back to Little House in the Prairie days or one of my books, which I wrote, um, prior to my mitochondria book, it was the disciples diet. What did people eat 2,000 years ago um, back in the Judeo-Roman um, history of time? And it's like, wow, they had fresher air. They actually argue probably higher oxygen air. They didn't have parabens. They didn't have phthalates. They didn't have styrenes like we do now. They didn't have air pollution and wireless signals. So think about how much more we have to take care of ourselves, whether it be disciples diet time or little house and prairie time. We have created... a uh, Quite the dilemma, and all we have to do is look at Flint, Michigan. We can look, of course, at what happened with Aaron Brockovic and uh, um, people that got poisoned by chromium in the well water. It's happening all over the place, and many of the audiences probably are drinking fluoridated water, which lowers iodine levels, and there's lots of research there. It's just like we're, we're no longer in Kansas, bottom line. Yes, absolutely. And more so even right now. Um, I think for a lot of people, it's a, it's a very foreign world still with, with what's going on with the coronavirus. And, and you know, do we over uh, sanitize ourselves? What do we do? Do we need bubbles? You know, where, where are we headed here? Um, but I think a really big, important thing for, for me and for a lot of patients and folks who might be listening to this is the, the improvement with the, the blood pressure. I, I, I see so commonly that blood pressure tends to start to go up as we get older. And a lot of docs are like, oh, no big deal. That's what happens as you get older. And I'm like, no, I don't think I want that. And no, I don't think I'm going to write that off for myself or my patients as, oh, I'm getting older and that's my blood pressure. I like that the concept that perhaps the blood pressure elevation has to do a little bit with the mitochondria starting to get a little tired. Oh, and I think without a question. And once again, if you are, if you think of a rubber band, and I'm, I'll give that as an example, I think we've all, when cleaning our desk after two, three, four years, or sometimes for me a little longer, the center drawer, and then the very back there's a rubber band. And like, okay, I'm going, oh, great, I was just looking for a rubber band. You put it around, it's like, snap, it's lost its elasticity because of yes. oxidation, the oxygen in the air. Well, that's the same thing happening because what happens is our blood vessels, of course, carry oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And of course, that oxidation causes fragility and rigidity. It causes them to become stiffened. And we generally know it's not just about cholesterol for heart disease. It's about C-reactive protein, homocysteine, fibrinogen, and as Beth Shirley commented, nitric oxide levels. We need to make sure we're getting the oxygenation, but also nutrient delivery. And the moment we start having that slippery slope where 
those 60,000 miles of blood vessels start becoming a little narrower, a little bit more stiff. That's our irrigation to the 50 trillion cells in our body. It's like if all of a sudden you want to be a farmer and you want to be a gardener, that all of a sudden you have a kink in your hose and your, your hose is brittle, so it can't take too much pressure. I mean, we're in a world of hurt. And unlike our automobile, which we can trade in, we can't trade in our bodies. We have to really take care of it. And I generally tell my patients, whether they're 40 or 50, it's not too late. You can always turn around. You might not be able at 40 or 50 to turn around as a, on a dime like you could earlier on. But once again, I see remarkable results with my patients by just taking care and taking heed and saying, wow, I'm going to allocate X amount of dollars towards supplementing my diet. And I tell my patients this, your diet is like the tiles on a counter. They're foundational. The supplements are merely grout. They're filling in the gaps. They're helping offset personal, occupational risk, genetic, familial risks. It's the grout. It's going to offer the pop and the pazing. But once again, you have to be eating and fueling yourself well. Otherwise, if you're just doing 99 cent um, fast food restaurants, which most of us do not do, but if that's what's in your budget, that's what's in your budget. There's other ways to eat a healthy and have some salads, have some fruits, have those things as catch as catch can. And I know there's a lot of, and we're finding it more and more with COVID-19, the social economic um, stratification, those that can and have access and those that can't, but would if they could. And so I think nourishing the body with a few very strategic supplements will allow improvement, including iodine and zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D. Those are all things that are, of course, important and level the playing field between the socioeconomic classes and, once again, allowing everybody to have a little bit better opportunity now to have some of the challenges that they otherwise would have because of where or how they were put into the planet. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is a big deal. I often think back to when I was at Bastyr and, and how we would get certain supplements from companies that they would donate. And, you know, we would all sit down and try to think about for patients, what's going to be like the biggest bang for the buck for this particular patient. And we'd all keep debating like, well, we don't know what they're going to eat. And, you know, it's, it's a catch 22 because obviously you can't supplement your way out of poor nutrition that doesn't work. And as much as I wish that that were the case, um, I don't know, I wish I actually like eating healthy food, but I know for some patients, it is something that is, is troublesome. But in terms of financial, a lot of, you know, vegetables aren't that expensive. Yeah, you don't have to get organic. But these are things that, you know, we definitely have to think about. Now, I want to switch the conversation a little bit with MitoQ and talk a little bit about athletes. Because I do see a higher athlete population and MitoQ seems to be something that, you know, a lot of folks are either on MitoQ in my practice or they're on CoQ10 and it's a hard, I have a hard, I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a hard sell sometimes on folks who are like, no, I know my CoQ works. I know that my 300 milligrams a day works. <laughs> Can you speak a little bit to that? Because I know you're talking about absorption and enhancement there. Yeah, well, and it's, a, and it's a beautiful question. And in the ideal world, I would argue both. The um, regular CoQ10, because it doesn't enter this uh, mitochondrial membrane, actually works at the extracellular outside of the body, whereas the mitochondrial is working on intracellular. Um, I'm about a mile away from the Nike campus, so I have a lot of world-class athletes, as well as people that, if they had started earlier, could have been. I have a 52-year-old uh, female. She's married to a chiropractor. She's just qualified for Chicago Marathon, Boston Marathon, was trying to qualify for the New York Marathon when COVID happened. And she had just kept on, she was feeling tired and worn out. She runs, you know, 50 to um, 60 miles a week, you know, on uh, just to stay conditioned right now. But she was trying to get personal records and she had to have a personal record to qualify for the most recent marathon she was wanting to qualify for. You know, she lives here in Oregon. And so here's this 50-year-old individual. We know her ATP and mitochondrial levels are diminished. And she says, I want a personal record. I need to have a personal record to qualify. So we got her five minutes faster. Um, on, and so she was just thrilled. But she was starting to feel tired. So we cranked up the MitoQ to a full 20 milligrams, which is where a lot of the research is. And it was remarkable, the difference. She was like, 
went from, I don't think I'm even going to be able to finish the race to having personally making a personal record, personal best in herself. And so what I do is I'll always, and in fact, in front of me right now, I have regular CoQ10 with PQQ. I have with me my MitoQ. And the way I always give my advice is what do I do for me or mine? And I also have, of course, also some true niogen here because I know that genetically I have to improve that. So for my athletes, they're doing those three or four things. They're doing their CoQ10, they're doing their PQQ, they're doing their MitoQ, and they're doing a true niogen or nicotinamide riboside. And that's because they have to feel their body. Plus they're asking themselves to be race cars, whatever, whether they're the extreme CrossFit or the weightlifter, they're asking themselves to go to the threshold, the cusp of their performance levels. And so as a result, we have to take care of the mitochondria. So at that level, I'm doing 20 milligrams of MitoQ, and then I'm doing anywhere from 100 to 300 milligrams of CoQ10 and 20 milligrams of PQQ because pyroquinolone quinone is actually shown to increase biodensity of the mitochondria, causes mitogenesis. So you have more mitochondria is a, the supposition of how it works. And then you have like extra horsepower, you have an extra large engine, or you have a second engine. And as a result, then the CoQ10 and the MitoQ is going to allow for that increased augmenting effect. So, and that's where I'm getting my patients even in their 50s. And I have world-class hurdlers and other individuals. And once again, I take no credit for it. They're the ones running the races and doing the work. We're just trying to get them to do the very best they can while remembering every time our patients, which are doing exercise, they're breathing in oxygen. Thank goodness, right? But once again, what does oxygen do? Causes free radicals. You see a piece of um, iron outside over the winter, the moisture and the oxygen cause rust. And that's oxidation. And so once again, we want to make sure they have enough antioxidants. So the CoQ10, MitoQ, I usually do them in combination because of the outside of the cell, inside of the cell. But the MitoQ, people generally feel the difference from my clinical experience. Within about three to four weeks, or in my case, because I apparently had burnt my adrenals out enough, sooner. So that way, when I was taking my maca and rhodiola and ashwagandha and other things for my adrenals, my now adrenal cells were saying, I'm a little bit more energetic. Let me do something with that. Back to my killer elf example. Let me make some cookies. Let me make some energy. Let me make some cortisol and norepinephrine and epinephrine and mineral corticosteroids like aldosterone. Because once again, every one of the cells have the potential to be underfueled. So it's not just the energy of my muscles, but the heart, the brain, and everything else. Hmm. So it sounds like, and, and just a couple things I'm seeing here. So we have to support the intra and intracellular and in, you know, so within the regular cells and then within the mitochondria together. And, and that's important. That makes sense. Now, now I got it. And in terms of this concept of adrenals, because I want to, I want to jump to that for a second. Um, I think a lot of people right now in, in the naturopathic medicine world get frustrated with adrenals because they're, they're difficult to treat and, and patients get, get frustrated as well. Would you be venturing to say that it might be useful to use the MitoQ first before you start adding, ramping up, say, pantothenic, B6, adaptogenic herbs, or would it be something that you would consider using MitoQ with the adaptogenic herbs to try to help restore some adrenal function? Yeah, I usually do, I, great question. I usually do it with, mm -hmm. um, it, because usually by the time my patients come in, it's like, I'm so tired. It's hard to show up to work. It's hard to get up or, or they have that chronic inflammation that occurs. And as we know, our adrenal glands often will do a four times salivary cortisol or a, a 24 hour urinary cortisol level to see how much cortisone or cortisol is being made. And we know the average healthy human being, if there's such a thing as average or healthy these days, <laughs> um, make about 20 milligrams of hydrocortisone. But if you don't make hydrocortisone, then you're not going to have proper blood sugar regulation. And if you've ever known of cortisone injections or cortisone creams, the audience, um, it's like, okay, well, yeah, I put some hydrocortisone in a rash and went away. Or, yeah, my friend went in for a cortisone injection, which, of course, has some downsides, by the way. And it's like, but, yeah, if your body was making the natural amount of 20 milligrams, and then when it gets stressed, it can make 25 or 30 milligrams or higher. It's like, wow, that controls inflammation. So it's, once again, catch 22 of nourishing those cells so that they can do what they can do. So 
In this case, all these wonderful adaptogenic herbs, and they're called adaptogens as you and I know, because they help us adapt to stress. And, and or like astragalus, an adaptogenic immune herb, as well as for adrenals. And so it's like, wow. But once again, our bodies have to have the ability to take that in. It's much like the cook in a cafeteria. He or she has to be able to have the energy to whoop out their favorite um, lemon meringue pie. And if they don't have the ability to whip that meringue, it's not going to be a very pretty pie. Mm -hmm. So the foundation for, for anybody who is fatigued is definitely looking at some CoQ10 that would be able to get across into the mitochondria, such as MitoQ. Yeah, and MitoQ is the only one that actually has the research showing it crosses over hundreds of times more. And once again, lots of research on it. So um, some inexpensive regular CoQ10 or ubiquinol, um, then the MitoQ for sure. Um, my wife had a concussion um, a year and a half ago, shattered her skull, brain bleed. Immediately, the first thing I wanted to put her on was MitoQ with curcumin. because so I wanted to bring down that inflammation and I wanted to help the cells within her body not only have the free radical controlling the benefits of the MitoQ, but also allow for her innate healing. Because one of the things which I stay humble on as a provider is what we know now compared to what I knew in 1992 when I graduated, five years from now, they'll know that much more. But if we stay out of the way of our body and we just fuel it properly, the innate wisdom that has kept the human body alive for millennia will continue to work. And we just have to ramp up our um, A game or our game face during a 2020 history of versus 20 AD or BC, different environment, different toxins. And so since we created a human tower of Babel, for lack of a better word, toxic milieu, we're cooking in our own juices. And I tell everybody, there's no such thing as an organic human in North America because <laughs> the houses we live in would disqualify us because of the off-gassing, the toxins, the cars we drive, the roads we lit, drive, our offices, all heavily toxic. And whereas an organic animal, if we were to look at an organic cow or chicken or free range, they're, of course, pristine environments. They're pastoral. But which human lives in such a nice environment? Nobody. So there's no organic human. So we have to now make up for the fact that we're not taking care of ourselves as well as we ought to be. Makes sense. Makes sense. So we have talked a lot about all the different aspects of MitoQ in terms of energy production, in terms of how it helps with immunity, circulation, blood pressure, athletes. We've kind of covered a lot of material. So it seems that MitoQ has such a huge range because obviously it works on our core factories inside our body. Now, Dr. Chris, where can folks find more information in addition to, of course, what I'm going to put at my, in my notes at drjcrossnd.com, where else can folks find info about the MitoQ product and what it has to offer? Um, of course, on mitoq.com, um, they have a website with great information. Um, I've written an article on mitoquinone, mitoQ, which is available at drmelitis.com. And um, there's just a lot of literature in the peer review um, literature. So I'm going to send you the bibliography, which you're welcome to share for the audience members that want to look at the science and click through the bibliography and go to the abstracts and sometimes the full articles. Uh, but if you type in mitoquinone into pubmed.gov, it's amazing what comes up. There you go, folks. There is a lot of support. I, I did it as well just to see what would come up to. And yeah, it's, it's astounding. And so this is something to pay attention to, especially if you're over 30, feeling fatigued and possibly worried about, you know, where your immunity is headed, where your health is headed. I definitely am a supporter of MitoQ and think that it could do some wonders for you. And definitely for athletes, I have seen the benefits of it and true niogen as well. And, and folks, I think I'm going to have Dr. Miletus come back and talk to us about true niogen, which is a nicotinamide based type of supplement. And we'll get, let him give you more on our next podcast. So Dr. Miletus, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Doc. You do a, such an amazing job. And I applaud the audience as well, because we are the change because we get informed, we get educated, and then we can share that information with so many other people and make the world a healthier, happier place. So everybody keep up the good work. 
Absolutely. Share the information. It's free for your use. Knowledge is power, folks. Hey, health junkies, Dr. Janine Krauss here. I hope you enjoyed my podcast. Guess what? I have a Facebook group. It's called Anti-Aging Health Tips with Dr. Janine Krauss. So if you want a little bit more of the Health Fix podcast, head over to my Facebook group and let's chat. Now I'm also offering a health transformation and restoration program. It's a one-on-one with me. And it's for folks who are sick and tired of going to doc after doc and health coach after health coach and not seeing the results that they want and deserve. In my program, I'm working with folks with transformation. So this isn't just a light program. This is a big deal. I'm going to change how you think about your health and your life kind of program. And I'm super excited to offer it to folks. And if you are at all interested, we should talk. I'm offering 45 minutes free with me chatting to see if and how I can help you. And you can get all the details over at my website, drjkrausnd.com. All right. You've survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Subscribe, rate, and share info. 